Hello everybody, welcome back to the series where we visualize audio using the spectrogram. This is a live spectrogram of my voice and we talked about the x-axis and the y-axis and you can see going from lower to higher it goes sounds like Wah. So where the x-axis is time here and the y-axis is the frequency and then if you can sing a note Mm, that will be this note here, that will be a C sharp fourth, and then you can see like, my voice has these lines on top of it, the harmonics and overtones that give voices their quality. In this video, we'll be talking about some of the machine learning applications of the spectrogram. So we'll take a quick glance at some slides from the University of Pennsylvania by uh, Mitch Marcus about speech recognition, and you can start to see the speech spectrogram here and how the various sort of letters that were used in this recording. Uh, they show some examples of, let's say, vowels. Uh, so we did this, we said the B, Ba, Bu, you can see how the different sort of harmonics are different. And if I say B, Ba, Bo, you can see how the various harmonics are, are, are different. And this is would be very informative for a machine learning model as, as features going into the model. Uh, it also talks about the consonants and how that sort of uh, is registered in, in a spectrogram and then goes into how the context of the, the sequence is, is very important. So there's the statistics of which letters appear after which others, or let's say which sounds statistically usually come, uh, which, let's say, vowels come after which consonants uh, factor into it. And so that's the next, let's say, topic beyond sort of that as, 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 as input, uh, which is using uh, hidden Markov models. One of the things that really uh, attracted me to this idea is some of this research on, on prairie dogs and their call alarms. Um, I'm, I'm putting a link to, to this video about uh, some of this research on decoding the, the, the language of prairie dogs. We can watch a little bit of it. Most of the calls are repeated multiple times so that you hear something that sounds like We can then measure the frequency and time values within a chirp and use statistical analysis to determine whether an alarm call for, say, a coyote is the same as, or different, than an alarm call for, say, a human. So this video is, is really brief. It's, it's about eight minutes, but it's absolutely fascinating. I don't know that we've looked at the meaning and how animals encode uh, information in their uh, voices or in the vocalizations or in their audio as well or as as detailed as, as we know from uh, this work on prairie dogs and the things are sort of built um, on top of it. So I would really recommend you watch it. It's a brief video. It's absolutely fascinating. And it's a great starting point for this second one, which is about cracking the dolphin um, a communication code. So this is work in, in Georgia Tech with the Wild Dolphin uh, Project or led by uh, Dr. Denise Herzing. Uh, there's some recordings here of, it could be a little loud, so let me maybe, let's listen to some, let's say dolphin sounds and. So, so these are bottlenose dolphins now, very coordinated and synchronizing the sounds. I'm gonna let you just hear it for a second. So you're able to see how recordings of dolphins and how they operate and how the sound visualized through a spectrogram can give us a very, let's say, low res view of what they could be communicating about. And the, the same talk, uh, there's a link also to this uh, below uh, in, in, the, in the description below, uh, shows some research at categorizing or clustering these, these vocalizations um, and applying some, some machine learning uh, techniques to to try to uh, maybe understand, you can maybe compare them to phonemes that we have in language. So this is a tool called Ohura, which is something we've made at Georgia Tech. This is a Daniel Kohlsdorf's PhD dissertation. For those of you who are into machine learning, you can go look it up at Georgia Tech's dissertation database. Um, in particular, we have the spectrogram up here. Um, we create, uh, we have about uh, 40 features here that, we're, that are learned features as being distinct in the database. 
Um, basically looking at convolution, see where those features are in the, in the spectrogram. From those, we try to look for repeating uh, time series. And that's these patterns here. So you can get, so you take in um, raw audio, uh, look for the areas that have uh, dolphin vocalization in them, try to find these features, and then from those features, look to see how they recur in time and get a motif. Then you look to see where all those motifs are in time and make sure they look reasonable uh, on, the, uh, on the system. Uh, I, this is a very interesting video. I'd, I'd, I'd urge you to, to, to watch the entire uh, video. They talk about how they call it a, a bag of regular expressions is the method that they found uh, using this analysis sort of fits uh, the recordings of, 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 of dolphins. To me, these questions are very relevant to machine learning and artificial intelligence because they tell us more about natural intelligence and the natural community and how biological species um, communicate, uh, which has been a black box for us uh, so far. But the more that our the data that we have, the compute that we have uh, increases and our, let's say, algorithms of, of processing increase, uh, maybe the more we resources we throw at these problems, uh, the more we'll be able to understand uh, these intelligence species around this. Because we tend to underestimate, I would say, their intelligence as individuals as and, and as groups. Um, and this work is really enlightening, and it, it helps us really place our our place as, let's say, as humans, uh, but also understand these other intelligent species and how really intelligent they are and how they operate as groups and individuals. But before we're able to, let's say, crack the code of a specific species. Some of the work that will lead up to that is a little bit more, let's say, or less ambitious, uh, but it paves the way to that direction. And the DK's community is one of these machine learning uh, research challenges that is, I think, paving the way towards that. So it's, this is the, the, the detection and classification of acoustic uh, scenes and events. Uh, so they're a few years of, of additions. It's a, a research challenge. They have multiple challenges. One of them is, oh, number five here is few shot bioacoustic event detection. So if you're able to, let's say, detect the sounds of birds in a, in a, in a scene, that's a good step. So you, you're, you can isolate the sounds of birds from the environment. That's one step. And then maybe the next step would be how do you detect different kinds of birds and different uh, sounds? That would be another sort of step. And then with work on, on dolphin, for example, some of that is, is clustering the various behaviors. So in the talk I'll be linking for, for dolphins about um, how a, a dolphin mother communicates with, uh, let's say, her, her, her calf. And that if we're able to classify that type of vocalization versus, let's say, the fights between groups of dolphins, that also removes a little bit of the blur and gets us a, a, a little bit closer. One of these papers from, I think, this year on uh, few-shot bioacoustic event detection, which is, um, you know, how do we throw our machine learning tools to detect uh, the sounds of, of, of animals, uh, one of the visuals you can see here is, you know, how the, the spectrograms uh, are fed into feature extractors and how they're um, one way that we get this information from, let's say, the, its audio form and process it this way before we feed it to uh, a, a machine learning algorithm. If you're curious how the spectrogram works, it's a transformation called the Gabor transform. Uh, Steve Brunton has the best explanation I can find. Um, I would, it's a, it's a form of, of the Fourier transform for the audio. I would refer you to this excellent video, uh, if you're interested in how that works. And around this time, it, at like nine minutes, 50 seconds in, it explains how something like a spectrogram is useful for the Shazam algorithm which, uh, you know, you record a song and you throw it at Shazam, it tells you what song uh, it is. So, again, another fascinating application for the spectrograms and how they help us understand uh, sound in, in the world around us. Hope you've enjoyed this look at the spectrogram and some of its applications in, in machine learning and around uh, cracking the language of animals. We'll see you in the next video.